I figured out there's it's basically a five-step process to taking something over. So the first thing that they do is they demand access, which mm-hmm. sounds totally reasonable. And in a lot yeah. of cases it is, but you know, you've got your boy scouts. Well, what if a girl wants to be a boy scout, let a girl in, right? So you already have to compromise on something extremely fundamental there, or, you know, maybe it's a uh, physics. You've got your physicist meetings and it turns out that it's 97% male for whatever reason. You don't have enough women. You need to put effort to include more women. So you're like, well, maybe we do. And certainly if women want to go to a physics meeting, why, why not? Right. Mm-hmm. Let them in. Well, yeah. the thing is, that's, is that's, that people... the re- that's the reasonable component of this. They're, they're feeding off the idea of that classically liberal idea of freedom of association, freedom that's of right. inquiry, access to opportunity, all stuff that we agree with. So they're, they're, exactly. they're utilizing that. We have no reason, in fact, to exclude anybody unless we had strong reasons to believe they're a troublemaker. But the thing is, is that the people demanding access are not women, for example. They're feminists. They're ideologically possessed women who are carrying an ideology that they equate with true womanhood. So if you criticize a feminist, like if you went on in your show and you said, you know, the feminists ruined North America. Like, just whatever, right? What would they say? They would say, Nick's attacking women. women. And yeah. No, you're not. You're attacking... Fa- it's like when they called out President Trump and they said, you called women pigs. And he said, no, I called Rosie O'Donnell a pig, <laughs> right? Yeah. So what that is, is this is a technique, though. And this is a technique where they shift the level of abstraction. So feminist is a specific, and they go up a level of abstraction to women and equate them like they're the same so that if you attack feminists, you attack women. Well, so what this, is, this is also kind of a, this is also kind of a manifestation of the whole Mont and Bailey thing as well. Exactly. Right? I mean, it's, it's the idea of, you know, we're, we're for inclusion. Well, who's against inclusion, especially if you're not going to give me a, a, a parameters to work with, uh, or uh, I think one of the most popular ones, and this goes with the feminist thing too, is the whole toxic masculinity. Mm-hmm. Toxic masculinity became this, uh, th- this broad sweeping condemnation of anything associated with traditional masculinity. And the moment you attacked them on that, they referred back to, no, 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 we're just talking about things like rape culture. And of course, there's things that men do that can be bad. And yeah. why would you have anything a problem with that? And as soon as they said, oh, okay, if that's all you're talking about, that's fine. And then they'd slowly left the castle and started attacking again. So no, that's right. That's yeah. right. It, they're using the Mott and Bailey as a Trojan horse, actually, in this case. So let us in, give us access. And it's very difficult unless you know they're a troublemaker to exclude access. And even if they are a known troublemaker, well, maybe they'll be good, right? So they demand access. I'll go through the whole five-step thing instead of breaking them all down just so people can hear it in one block. But they demand access. Then they demand accommodation. It's not enough that they're in. They have to be treated the way that they want to be. Then they demand a seat at the table. The reason that it, we've been being treated badly is because we don't have any power. Once they get a seat at the table, they put all their effort into gaining more seats at the table. So they demand to control the table. And then when they control the table, they demand to be able to control the entire institution. Uh, so that's the five-step progression. And the crux is actually not on access, it's at accommodation. When they come in and they say, this room is not inclusive to women or not inclusive to trans, or whatever it is, what they're telling you is you let me in, but you're not doing it right until you change the rules around not the person, but their ideology conflated with that person. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, you let you say, fine, women can come to the physics meeting and guys get up there and they talk about spinners or whatever physics object. And for some reason, this is a feminist and she sees her opportunity to say spinners make me feel uncomfortable. (laughs) That's a masculine concept. And or the speed of light is a sexed equation, like Luce Irigaray said back in the 90s. And this is freaking me out. And uh, E equals MC squared is a sexed equation because this was her real argument (laughs) because it privileges the speed of light over all other speeds, which is a masculinist ideal. (laughs) And that was the real (laughs) argument this lunatic French Uh, feminist gave in the 90s about E equals MC squared. And so they come up with some nonsense and they say, well, I don't feel safe or I don't feel welcome. Or I feel like this is, you know, something that I can't tolerate. So you have to now change the policies to accommodate my ideology. And that, by the way, is the definition of inclusion. Mm -hmm. Diversity is let us in. Inclusion is accommodate our ideology, accommodate our politics, make changes for the most cantankerous 1% of whatever identity group is being spoken uh, for by, you know, feminists speak for women. The queer lobby speaks for what they call this synthetic coalition LGBTQ that doesn't exist. They're not even the same thing. None of the letters match. Um, 
So it's a synthetic coalition, but they speak for them. And so they hide behind that and demand accommodation for the identity group through accommodating their ideology. And once they change the rules, you're basically done because you've now sacrificed part of your soul to put up with their with their demands. So that and, and that's what I was going to ask you is that I, I think a lot of people, when they hear about those five steps, they they might intuitively think, OK, well, the real problem becomes when they want to control the table. And it's like, no, the real problem starts with accommodation, because the moment you indicate that we're willing to um, significantly alter the organization, the reason for the organization's existence or the way that we operate, you, you've essentially you've you've changed the paradigm at that moment to where they know, okay, they're, they're going to be able to get the rest of what they want. That's right. They know they're going to be able to push you around. They've already now changed the rules so that the rules will slightly favor them or significantly favor them over others. So they've disproportionately empowered themselves. Um, well, and, and you have quick, humiliated yourself in front of your whole organization. So you don't have standing to resist it anymore yeah. later. It looks arbitrary. Well, and, and, and what you said there was important too, because it's, it's the idea of, um, and, I, and I've noticed this a lot. They don't say, I, they're, the less and less are they saying, I don't feel included or I don't feel welcome. What they're saying is I don't feel safe. And so it's, it's this implication that something about you or something about your organization is inherently violent mm -hmm. um, because we, we are programmed for good reason to want to you know, prevent or stop or thwart aggressive violence toward mm -hmm. somebody that's perceived to be either innocent or vulnerable or marginalized. <laughs> And so once again, it's playing off of this mentality that I think is kind of rooted into, to some degree, classical liberalism. I know it's rooted into my Christianity that I'm supposed to protect the innocent. I'm supposed to protect yeah. the downtrodden. And now you've put me into a category where if I'm not doing the thing that makes you feel safe, well, then I, I'm not just a bad guy. I'm not just obtuse. I'm actually participating in creating a violent atmosphere. And so obviously I have to do something to correct for that. And that might be true if I was dealing with a reasonable person. Right. Um, and, and they were making, and they had a reasonable concern with respect to their safety. That's but right. we're now, we're now talking about any idea I don't like is now a threat to my safety. That's right. Yeah. And so it turns out that a little bit of chauvinism is actually <laughs> what would have repelled woke all along. You know, you came in, you're in the physics, you don't like spinners. Well, guess what? We call them spinners. If you don't want to hear it be called spinners, you can leave. Yeah. Or you can endure whatever you want to do, right? But we didn't have that attitude. We we actually, uh, to use the term of art for the last decade or so, we actually cucked ourselves repeatedly. And that's a good term, honestly, for it. Because once you've done that, like I said, you've humiliated yourself and you don't have the standing to say, no, what we were doing before was actually good. It actually yeah. worked. It was great. That's not to say that we shouldn't enter into a little bit of reasonable reflection or review I mean, that's not necessarily its own slippery slope. But the fact of the matter is that if you don't have the the backbone and the not just courage, but the the like confidence to say, no, we organize this in order to facilitate doing physics as best we can, and it's fine. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like it, we took steps to include you and you're not happy, you know, go ahead and leave. 